It's Survivor's Friendly Fire Show, episode 223, for sometime in December 2022. That was confusing. Uh, I'm one of your co-hosts, Steve Wright. Joining me is Ben Salter. Hello, Ben. How are you doing? I think I'm good right now. There's no point pretending this is yet another pre-recorded show because you're still in Indonesia. Whereabouts would you be by now? Uh, Makassar, I think. There you go. Or maybe still in Jakarta for a day or two. I can't quite remember. Almost Mm, in Bali for a weekend, and then I am back home. Ooh, so, what a life you're living. Well, it's going to be Very way jealous. too hot for my liking. And I have to wear like collared shirts and pants because we're mm. meeting like ministers and being very proper. So I'm going it's to fine. be overheating quite extensively, yeah, I can assure you. But then you can have like a 75 cent bin tank. Like it all comes around and you, you get that nice lifestyle. The, the Indonesian people are very nice. So. They are. And half of them, not half of them, that would be that would be a lot of people. Uh, half of my workplace is Indonesian colleagues, and they're very lovely. So Perfect. it's good to always see them in person. I'll tell you all about it next week. But this week, hmm. pre-recorded, not filler content, as, as you reminded me yes to, or yesterday. That wasn't even yesterday in, in our world. As you reminded me, this is all great gold content. Um, and we're, you know, we're, we're rounding out the year. We're getting ready to, you know, calm down a little bit, have a kick back our, kick back our feet. I, oh my God, save me. I just, what am I even trying to say anymore? What you're trying to say is good news if you get yourself a new PS5 or Xbox series, whatever, this year, because you've got at least five years to play that console until the next gen happens. Uh, because as part of this, Xbox may or may not get Activision now. Various things have happened in the last few weeks. Let's not get too bogged down in that. They may end up going to court over this. doesn't matter. What we have got out of this is some details from lawyers who have basically heard from Sony and I think Microsoft as well that their next generation console will be coming in 2027 at the absolute earliest, which is no surprise. It's just that the surprising part is that we've actually seen that in writing so early in a generation. But I think we would expect that. That's like seven years between consoles. Should that happen? That is kind of when I thought they would pencil in next gen. Well, first of all, that's exactly what I was trying to say when I couldn't speak. So well done. This mm. is very eloquently put. And yes, I think I think you're right. Uh, it's that weird sweet spot where it's been long enough. And some would say maybe too long. Uh, and you're seeing a PC like being able to basically just do the holodeck or something crazy because it's overly powerful and refreshes continually. And, and your console is kind of chugging. But I guess, you know, you look at... at the PS3 to PS4 is a really good example. The PS4 right mm. now is still being supported. It was a seven-year uh, gap between the release of PS4 and PS5, so who knows what happens in the future. Maybe we just have our little like streaming sticks embedded within our finger that we play video games somehow that way. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a classic no-news headline, really, in that this is exactly what we would expect. We haven't really learned anything, but we've we kind of have learned something in that we know that we're seeing slightly behind kind of uh, not, we're not seeing how the sausage is made. We're seeing how the sausage is maybe planned uh, in that we've, we know that they are thinking about their new consoles this far out. And I think we've always kind of known that we've assumed that, but to just kind of see that it has been spoken about behind closed doors and that they kind of plan that seven ish year timeline from the beginning because it kind of does feel like when consoles come out, they're kind of like eh, maybe a year or so out. It kind of feels like, oh, we're about done here. Let's go next gen. But maybe it's been more orchestrated than we thought when a console was successful. Like they planned that amount of time from the beginning because the last gen was seven years. The one before that was about seven years. Like it's it's pretty consistent between, at least since PlayStation and Xbox have been the dominant platforms. Yeah. Well, I think things are ever so slowly starting to turn into just like glorified pcs and Mm. it's really evident on xbox's side like you know the the one runs the same os as the series consoles right now and i'm pretty sure they'll kind of just keep evolving that and whatever the extra special new xbox is i have no idea what to call it because the naming conventions are so out of left field who knows like it'll be a familiar experience just on a more you know, uh, no. fancier hardware kind of situation. I'm hoping Sony kind of does that. Like, they couldn't between PS3 to PS4 because, obviously, it was just a completely different beast. PS4, though, to PS5, you had to kind of relearn all the UI and stuff, but I think the PS5 is in a pretty good place, so hopefully we see more of just, like, a slight evolution 
then a completely different thing again. Um, and it'll be next gen. I don't know, like the Callista protocol is, is being marketed as, you know, like photo realistic. Like here's a picture of the dude. Have you seen that? Here's a picture of the actor. Yeah, yeah. Here's a picture of the character in the game. Do you know what I think they should have done? They should have actually labeled them accidentally wrong and kind of been like, uh, said, this is the one which is made in Unreal 4 or 5, and this is the real photo. Uh, and then all the people who are like, oh, it still looks fake, you can tell, which has been a bunch of the comments has been that. And they're just people trying to troll or kind of get in. And they do look slightly different, but it's pretty close. If they then came back and said, actually, we got it wrong, the one that you're kind of saying doesn't look right, that's the real photo. Anyway, that's what I would. Well, I was like, I was trying to play it like one of those like spot the difference puzzles, and I was struggling. Like, I probably should have just tried to like just slap them one on top of the other and turn transparency up and down and try to figure out if it was. It almost looked like the same thing twice, just very like, close. Yeah, but I suppose that's a still static image. Like, that's always been pretty great. It's when they're actually in motion, especially in like a real time cutscene in a game where your character's wearing whatever you want them to wear. Like, it's not pre rendered at all that's when there's kind of a gap starts to come in. Like it's that level of uh, immersion. So probably a little misleading in that front. I'm sure it doesn't quite look that perfect throughout the whole game. But your point basically is games look pretty good right now. So we're not in a huge rush to get to next gen. Well, and like games look pretty good on 360 and PS3 and they looked even better on PS4 mm. and Xbox One. And like we're, that's that's slowly becoming less impressive. Like there's only so good things can look. I think yeah. God of War Ragnarok, that was a really good example of kind of PS4 gameplay with like having to squeeze between rocks and like lie down in your boat as it loads the, the next bit of the map around you, you know, trying to make you think that nothing's really happening in the background. Don't worry about that. Um, whereas like a true PS5 game using the SSD probably doesn't have to rely upon those kind of tricks. So like to me, that's the that's showing the evolution of games so like in the next god of war or whatever you know comes from santa monica like you're not going to have that ps4 limitation so here's like what we can do with the machine i don't know if that's going to be that much different than between like the ps5 and ps6 because that's sort of addressed so like i i, I don't know what the next huge kind of generational no. will be and we never knew at the time and even going back to like the PS2 gen, like when you saw those games at the time, I can like everything was like, wow, this looks so amazing, like so lifelike. And now you go back and play them and they look terrible. So I'm not saying that's going to happen now with a PS5 or a Series S game. They do look pretty great. And I think they're still going to look pretty great in 10 or 20 years. That, as you say, that, that curb and that steep kind of climb up is massively reducing. Uh, but we won't really know until we actually get to the next gen what the difference is. When we see them side by side, I'm sure at some point we'll be like, actually, PS5, garbage, PS6 all the way, as we were like, you know, PS3 to PS4. I can remember being like, PS3, I'm never going to play that again. Well, and the good news is we have five years. So we have five years to enjoy minimum. this, and we have five years minimum to then be impressed by whatever happens next. How yeah. exciting. So if, if you were waiting for a PS6, don't. <laughs> Get get on the pre-order lists now, though, because you might need to. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, yeah. It'll be like COVID-26 by then, and it'll be a, a whole different pandemic. I shouldn't have made that joke. I'm just going to knock oh, on yes. every surface That's... I can find. Touch wood. Mm. Yep. <sighs> well, it might be a little bit broken. We talked about it two weeks ago. But uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, it doesn't matter if you fall through the world or, you know, rig a multiplayer match so it looks like you have a Pokemon penis. Like, it's... It's broken, but it's still selling 10 million copies in just three days. So, hmm. Nintendo's biggest ever launch, best-selling game within its first three days, which is it's not surprising, but I, I think it shows one of two things. The people either not care as much as we think about graphical glitches and issues like that and some, frankly, serious performance issues. Like, as we said a couple of weeks ago, it's still a fun game, but it's a tough, it's rough. It's tough to play. Maybe the average player doesn't care as much about that as we do. In the same, we always kind of loop back to that same example of, I'm sure there are people who still watch things on their fancy 4K TV on a DVD because it's fine for them. Like they don't need it to be the best. In game terms, maybe dodgy frame rate and the whole game slowing down doesn't really bother them that much. Well, I, I, uh, I guess, apparently not. Or, you know, I don't know how they factor in the refunds. So maybe people are buying this in droves mm. and then returning it in droves. I don't know how that works, but... um. Well... I think there's an alternative as well. I think it's just Pokemon and a lot of people have a Switch way more than any other console previously for Nintendo at this point in this life cycle. I think there's a lot of people who probably bought their Switch years ago 
used to play Pokemon and thought, yeah, I'm going to jump back in. Like, I kind of feel like it'll be a nice nostalgic kick and I want to see what it's like now. And they probably thought, like, as we were saying a couple of weeks ago, most first party Nintendo games, you, you can say a lot about them, but they're always well polished. They're yeah. ready to go. They need minimal patches and you can't really find game breaking bugs or even bugs at all unless you really go looking for them. Yeah. They don't just kind of hit you in the face like Pokemon's doing. Uh, so I do wonder if it might tarnish their reputation a bit to the extent that people kind of think, oh, Nintendo games aren't at the quality they used to be. They used to be, you buy Mario, Zelda, whatever, and they run perfectly well. I think it might hurt them a bit in that way. I don't think they'll think about that. I think they'll think, look at all the money we're getting. It doesn't matter. We don't have to get them out polished, but it might bite them you know, in three years for the next mainline Pokemon game. I think... What you said about Nintendo and quality is absolutely correct. Like I think if, if you play Odyssey, it's it's like the hmm. it's 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 Mario. It's super polished. Zelda, same thing. They delayed Zelda to probably get that same um, level of quality in in Tears of the whatever Tears of the called. Kingdom. Thank you. Um, I think Nintendo's problem of late is that things are polished, but kind of sparse so uh, with mm. like mario golf if it was there with uh, even like nintendo switch sports like golf's coming don't worry about it we'll get there later like there's really polished products but like half of a game that you'd probably expect so that yeah. was becoming sort of an issue and now adding on this quality issue like i think it's sort of snowballing a little bit for nintendo and you know not that i wanted to bite them in the ass but i hope it sort of does in a way as a lesson to be learned so we see improvements yeah so previously they were doing launching games without all of the content which we last year and even we you we would have expected everything to be there day one and they're just saying that extra mode will come later even super mario party which sold crazy it sold over 10 million copies and maybe like two or three years after launch they said hey we're going to add an online mode to this game and it's kind of like well great but Shouldn't that have been there when it launched? Like such a basic feature. And they, I think they might kind of realize they can get away with it. And it kind of makes me think if Nintendo's doing this and we, we saw it to a much bigger degree with Cyberpunk when it came out, are more games just going to come out without features or underdone and lacking that polish we expect because they know we're going to buy them anyway. And it just gives them more time to, to polish it and fix it later. Like, yes. Like the answer is yes. Like what was, what was that quote from the Sonic Frontier from Sonic Team? There's a long way hmm. to go with this release. It's like, well, but it's it's out. <laughs> you've but, you've yeah. released it. Why don't wait until it's ready and then, then release uh, it? And what a strange one for that, because they didn't say that until they got a bit of backlash in reviews and from users kind of saying this game feels a bit unfinished. And then they were like, suddenly, oh, no, no, we just wanted your money now. But the game's not finished. Like, yeah. what a, well, that was a strange one. We need to make Q4 uh, Christmas period. So sorry. I, like, yeah. And like that old that old saying, ask forgiveness, not permission. Yeah. Like, I hope we I hope we're not seeing a lot of that. Like, I think I think CD Projekt Red sort of got away with it for Cyberpunk, but I think they've also had to spend this last year where they were expecting to be doing other things, trying to claw back their reputation and improving Cyberpunk at the same time. So, like, they did get away with it, but they also had to they they paid their dues in to a certain ex, to a certain extent. So I yeah. hope that. Is you know I hope Nintendo has to pick up some of that slack. I hope the Sonic team, you know, they're they're talking about the next Sonic game. It's like no 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 fix fix the next one or fix this one then then worry about the next one. Like I hope we see more of that as well. People need to push back. But it goes you know like there's always been those stupid Call of Duty boycott this Call of Duty uh, you know Steam group. I'm not I'm not gonna buy the next one. You go look on launch day and every single person in the group is bought and is playing that new Call of Duty. Like you actually have to vote with your wallet if this is a big issue to you. And sen selling 10 million copies in three days is decidedly not that. Mm, so which is why I think Nintendo will keep following this because they they don't need to. It hasn't caused them any issues. I think Switch Sports sold pretty well as well without the golf mode. And they didn't rush that out the door. I think they've only just released it now. Yeah. Kind of a, here it is. Here's an extra mode that, you know, two generations ago would have definitely been there day one. It's just a, we don't need to give it to you. On the one hand, it keeps the games popular when they're adding a mode in. They're not fixing it. We're not talking about a glitchy game. We're just talking about a game lacking content. Maybe it's a strategy to get you coming back later because, like, here's something new and a reason to return to this. It's better than it being, like, super broken. 
Yeah, well, like, from what you guys were saying, it's Game Freak saying, oh, hey, Ethan, you can actually leave the, the first house in the game if you uh, download this update three years later. Congratulations. Mm. Or, Ben, you won't fall through the stairs, so... Look, I'm yeah. sure they will patch it. The problem with selling 10 mil within three days is the time it's going to take them. Like, as we said, Game Freak is not a huge studio. I think they have under 200 developers, and they're split into at least two teams because Legends Arceus was made by a different group to Scarlet and Violet which kind of whittles that down even further. And no doubt there's a team working on next year's game, whatever that is, which is probably, I don't know, probably a spin-off somewhere. Yeah. So there's not that many people, which means how many of them are kind of allocated to fixing this game? I'm sure they knew when they released it that we're going to have to put some time into improving this. But if you've already sold 10 million copies, and that's now been a few weeks, uh, like Ethan, when he spoke about it a few weeks ago, he'd finished the game already. Within a few days, he'd just kind of smashed through the 30 hours. And you can keep playing at that point, but... A lot of hardcore Pokemon players do do that. So is there going to be millions of people who have played through this game and they eventually patch it in six months and be like, hey, it's great. Look, it actually runs properly now. It's not running at 70% speed, but it's too late. Like, it's kind of like, oh, we just we just struggled through and we got there in the end. Because it is a, it is a good game underneath, but it's it's not as good as it could be. Yeah. Well, I like, I, I've been playing Sonic, like I said, and there's some, like, really stupid mechanics stuff that, like, it's not a glitch. It's just, like, broken. But then, mm. you know, there's just, like, there's pop-ins and things on Series X that, like, you know, could be fixed. That kind of thing could be fixed. Um, and as we were talking about last week, you know, like, the Callisto Protocol was, you know, hadn't even come out yet. And people were already, you know, like, focusing their attention to the post-launch, like, paid stuff that you can get after the fact. The, the, the problem, I think, in today's market is that there's not a lot of room to just let your developers sit there and not be generating new stuff. Yeah. to make you money so like you, you don't want them to be in the case of saints row as an example spending months fixing saints row when they could be doing something new or else and that's you know maybe bitten volition in the ass because now they've been merged by embracer into gearbox in some way that we're not fully sure what it is yet so they might be helping make borderlands games they might have had to you know ditch saints row and they've just spent what three four months trying to you know fix the hundreds of bugs in their game that's a problem for one, if you have to fix hundreds of bugs in your game, but... Yes, and they do. Yeah. Well, they've done some yeah. of it, but are they going to get to do the rest? Who knows? Like, it's not making money, so they've been, you know, shuffled under a different division from the, the look of it. Which is not unusual to have that happen when a game doesn't do as well as the publisher's kind of anticipating to kind of move the team on or put them else put them in with someone else. Uh, but yeah, it's like it's tough for something like Saint Troy where it's kind of rebooting it and it just gets that bad rap as it deserved. It was a super, like it wasn't ready, that game. It was so glitchy and so broken. Uh, like had they given it more time, it probably would have got a better reception and that probably would have generated more money. And then they would have had more hope of a, a future sequel at some point. I'm kind of thinking Saint Troy is at least going back on hiatus for a while now. Like I just can't see it just coming back with a direct sequel, which was probably their plan. That's probably why they were moved elsewhere because that's not what they're going to be doing anymore. Yep. So that's the downside. Like Nintendo knows they can get away with Pokemon. They're going to sell it like crazy no matter what. I think people were a little more cautious around Santro. It was being rebooted. We weren't entirely sure what to expect. And then it, it gets, you know, we gave it, I think, a pretty fair 4 out of 10 for the state that it was in at the time. Uh, and that probably does help people decide, you know what, I'm not going to get it, at least now. I'm going to wait for that to be fixed. And it may never get fixed to the degree that it probably deserved and would have been a much better game had it come out a year later, potentially. But it's all about money. It's all around to, we've scheduled it in now and it just needs to go out the door now. So trying to be optimistic, rather than this mm. being Game Freak, you know, just shipping something out because they want your money and they have, you know, all these horrible thoughts in the back of the head what if it is or do we still get to like put this up to it, it's the pandemic and it's harder to make games or like when does that excuse not get to become an excuse any longer i don't think we do allow that for this game i think i think they've gone for something quite ambitious for what their studio can do like they they haven't done many 3d games really game freaks games have always used kind of older tech and they've always been for older hardware so it made sense and it's still for older hardware now but they've, you know, Legends Arceus went a bit more open, fairly open, really, and Scarlet and Violet have gone to a way bigger open world. And I just don't think their their team of probably a hundred or less developers who are given maybe a year to make this game, like it doesn't make sense. Their development timeline doesn't quite make sense. So even if there had been no pandemic, 
maybe we get a slightly better performing game, but I don't think by much. I feel like if they're going to go for more ambitious games, they're going to go more open world, they're going to go kind of that next level Pokemon that we were kind of dreaming about 20 years ago, they need to kind of better resource it or give it more time. Like a game like Zelda gets given five years and it's allowed a few delays and it that will probably come out very polished and it will be like those early Switch games that we expect from Nintendo. It, it will just run and it will work well and it will probably look pretty good, even though it's on pretty old hardware. And I feel like Game Freak is just... And it's their own fault. Like, they, they're a one-third stake of the Pokemon company. Ethan explained it. He kind of said it's because these Pokemon are going to be in the anime. There's the trading cards. Like, there's more than the game. So it's it's hard for them to delay it because it all has to be delayed. Yep. And I think that's why. It's all down to that. I kind of feel like the pandemic had a little part to play in this at this point. There are so many other factors. Uh, maybe they could bring on a support studio. Like, how many studios do we see make a Call of Duty game now? There's like 20 listed in the credits. Yeah. Maybe if they could bring on at least one, maybe a couple others who have open world experience. If the next one's going to be on Switch, which I doubt by then, but who knows, someone who has experience with the hardware to kind of show them this is what you can do and this is how we would do it and we can beef up your studio. I just think with what they currently have available, they went a bit too ambitious even though their ideas are great, they just couldn't get it to run in the time they had available. Yeah, and like I'm, I'm, st- I'm all for the pandemic excuse, but I'm not going to accept it in a finished product any longer. Like I just, mm. you just need to delay your game if it's not in a state to release. You just have to, you know, take the hit. And I know it's it's easier said than done with all the business reasons that we sort of alluded to before, but. I forget that Nintendo quote, but it's such, it's such a good quote. If it's like a Miyamoto one, like. What is mm. it? It's you know, it's it's way easier to delay a game so it's good in the end than release a crappy one now, which is such a paraphrase, but that's the yeah. It's this is going against what Nintendo's always done. They've always kind of been like our products are high quality. That's what the whole seal of quality was about when it first came out like in the eighties years ago. It was very much a, either we've made this game or we've tested it and we agree that it's worthy of our standard. Now they haven't done that for years. Like they've just slapped it on a bunch of things, but. For their own games, it pretty much has held true in that you you know what to expect. You know this game's at least going to run. Uh, and you know, it's it, even if it's not to your taste, it's going to be a pretty solid and well-made game. So that's what they've let slip here. And it's it's rarer for them than most other devs. Like they're not Bethesda and we don't really want them to go down that path. No, I really don't. <sighs> well, I'm sure you're still playing Scarlet and Violet anyway, yeah? Oh, it's a fun game. It's just... <laughs> It's a little rough. Maybe it's only sold 5 million copies, but it's all you weirdos who've bought both Scarlet and Violet. Bought both. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people do. <laughs> You're not weirdos. I just don't uh, appreciate the uh, the franchise the as much dip. as some of you. So congratulations mm. if you're having a good time, which is always what we want you to do. Have a good time. Um, I'm, I'm still in Indonesia. We know this. What have, what have you been doing theoretically this past week, Ben? Uh, well, I've been traveling around country south australia so driving all over the place to do my other job to go do regional stuff so that's fun get to go see the regions get to go do different stuff i'm going to assume it's fun hasn't happened (laughs) by the time you listen to this maybe i'm listening back to this on a drive like five hours back to adelaide or stranded in the in the outback somewhere hopefully not that would be hopefully not hopefully not there's weird things happening in the outback so hopefully not i've seen wolf creek um we'll, we'll talk about my trip we'll talk about your trip and By the time we're back in person, not in person, but, you know, in the same country recording the night before we release the podcast, we'll be able to talk about the the Keeley Game Awards. We'll be able to talk Survivor's Game Awards. We'll be able to talk Callisto Protocol and whatever else. So it'll be an interesting time next week. How do we find you on the Internet, though, before then? Deal Ben underscore Salter on Twitter. Although by the time you hear this, maybe not. Who knows? Seems like Twitter's staying around, at least for now. Well, I, I heard Elon's going to make a poll as to whether or not you can stay on specifically, Ben, on the platform. Oh, yeah. So well, the people will, will be able to speak on that, I suppose. Yeah, uh, it's going to do each user individually. It's He likes the attention, so he might actually do that. I wouldn't put it past him. Um, I'm S-Right, AU. Anything else before we uh, finish this second of only two pre-recorded recordings? Nope, that's it. Enjoy your trip, and we'll see you, listeners, and I'll see you back here in a few weeks.